welcome to the video. Today we're going to be talking about one of the most influential music subcultures ever, ska. <laughs> just a musical genre, it's a movement that changed both music and the UK for the better, I think. Whether you're a fan of the Jamaican originals or the British revival, or indeed both, has shaped so much of the life I've lived and the music I've enjoyed. And I've been lucky enough to work with and know some of the legends who helped build that scene. So, grab yourself a rum and coke, or a cup of tea, whatever, get comfy, and let's go on a journey from the streets of Kingston Town, Jamaica, to the pubs and clubs of London. We'll be talking about the pioneers, the revival, the bands I knew, and a few hidden gems. So let's start where it all began, Jamaica. The late 1950s and early 1960s saw the rise of ska, a brand new sound that blended Caribbean rhythms with American style jazz and rhythm and blues. It was upbeat, it was infectious, and it was pure sunshine. Really, it started with the folk music of Jamaica called Mento. How are you there, we land on me? Oh my, how you wheel on me? A complex blend of African and European rhythms. During the late 1950s and 60s, public sound systems entertained on the streets of Kingston. Most prominent of them were the Trojan, run by Duke Reed, Voice of the People from Prince Buster, and Cox Own Dodd's Downbeat. They played American tracks like this. Did you recognise the Scar Beats? Then what would happen was the British invasion changed American music forever and rhythm and blues was out of fashion and everybody started getting into this new Beatles and Stones and all that kind of thing, pop music with an edge. And so it meant that these guys in Jamaica had to make their own music. And that's really how Scar started. So don't expect me to talk about downbeats and offbeats and all that stuff. That's not really my thing. I just enjoy the music. <laughs> Derek Morgan was a huge figure in the early days of ska. Derek had a terrific energy on stage, but by the time I put him on in 2009, I suppose it was, at the 100 Club in Oxford Street, London, he was blind and had to be led on to the stage. But once he was there, he took charge of the room and delivered an hour of amazing music, including some of his greatest hits. He was well over 70 by this time, but he went off afterwards to do another show in Brixton. There's plenty more to come, but I'd just like to say at this stage that if you're finding anything that you like with this, please like it down below. And if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. You've got no idea how much that helps. And comment, let me know what you think. And now back to the music. The first initial scar hit was My Boy Lollipop by Millie Small. <laughs> a cover of the 1956 Barbie Gay R&B classic that doesn't sound all that different to me. Which emphasizes the similarities, I suppose, between American R&B and ska. But it was Desmond Decker who delivered ska music around the world. First with 007 Shantytown. Then Israelites, it met and plenty more. I was lucky enough to be Desmond's agent and friend for a long time in the 1970s and 1980s and right up till his death in 2006. He was one of the best live performers I've ever seen. As I say, sadly he died in 2006 and at his funeral I met Prince Buster for the first time. On time. Shake up long. Strong. Buster, of course, was one of the pioneers of ska and one of its greatest influences on the revival of the 1980s, when Magnus shot to fame with Prince, which was their tribute to him. 
It's easy to be London centric, especially if you live there. But the emphasis of this new ska movement was in Coventry, where the specials formed in the late 1970s. And Jerry Dammers, the band member, created the iconic two tone record label, which also featured the beat. Madness, they put out the Prince and Selector. This is what we remember today, but in the 1980s at the Cricketers, when I was putting on at shows, there were plenty more bands, especially people like the Forest Hillbillies, the Deltas, and plenty more I can't remember. <laughs> Similarly, at the 100 Club in the early years of this century, I think I went there in 1998, something like that, and I left in 2010. We had people like Roddy Radiation and Neville Staple from the specials, and we had the Trojans, which was run by Gaz Mail, John Mailson, who was a big Sky DJ, and numerous bands from people like Jerry Dammers, and he had various projects, and members of Madness played quite a lot, including their band called the Nutty Boys. <laughs> And the thing interesting thing was, when these bands played at the Hunt Club especially, you would find that the, the audience was full of members of various more bands of that type. I don't know why they were there. Were, were they checking them out? It was an amazing time back then, and it was really, really exciting. And there was something happening. Apart from all the rest of it, it actually, I suppose it was very influential in the anti-racism of the time, and there was rock against racism, all the other things. And of course, Jerry Dammers was very prominent in this and his song Nelson Mandela is an absolute classic. Free Nelson Mandela Free I think that it brought people together. Just because you're a black boy Well, anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it's not too different from what I normally do. And you catch me next time, and I'm going to put up a video up there. If you enjoyed this, you're certainly going to enjoy that. So thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.